welcome back to James's Repair Shop. Uh, I have a new video. This video is on the remote trunk release. It was an option on these cars, these 65 Thunderbirds. Uh, I believe all of them, it was still an option. I don't think it came standard on any of them. Uh, George, a uh, service technician from Michigan, was asking questions. He wants to install one in his car. And he picked himself up um, a set of... Uh, bits and pieces needed for that job. Uh, though he had some questions around how it ties into the vacuum system, uh, what kind of screws go in the rear plate. Uh, so I started looking at the one I have. With This is a factory installed system in this car, the remote trunk release. And it's vacuum operated. I think I mentioned that. And this one's completely intact. Uh, so I'm going to go through it right from the engine right to the uh, trunk lid on how this is installed. It's a, I feel it's a fairly elaborate uh, system for what it does, but that's what Ford did. I, I can just envision some old hard nose engineer from way back said everything must be vacuum system, <laughs> not electrical. GM only does electrical, I don't know who, what the conversation would have been, but someone had, with some authority, had to say, we're doing this in vacuum because it's totally unnecessary. But that's what we have, and it's a bit of history for these old cars. So uh, I thought I would do a video so everybody could see, uh, and also help George out with his questions as well. So let's get into it. First place we're going to be going is at the start of where it joins into the engine. And we'll work our way back from there. All right, now we have the hood open. Now this car has the DuraSpark system on it. But beside the DuraSpark system is this can, the vacuum can. And uh, where it tees into the engine, where it gets its vacuum from, the source, this line that goes from the uh, intake around to your park brake release, and I believe it also runs the rear ventilation in these hard tops. So it tees in right there, just right off of this brace. It comes straight over to the can, and in the can and back, and it runs wrong over here. I mean, this is how it's run in this car. I mean, it could have been somewhere else, but it has the uh, little plastic guards on it still. And then it goes in through its own grommet through the firewall. That one needs to be replaced, but it's like a little foam. It's not even a rubber one. It was like a foam plug of some sort, right beside the heater hoses. So, so that's how that's all put in. Uh, this is uh, this can needs to be fixed. It's it's come off its mount, but what it is, I don't know if you can see it or not. I I will put a picture in if I can't. It's a trico. And there's the part number. So it is a Trico system. The hoses are the same size of hose. I think they're, they're almost around a quarter inch, just slightly less than a quarter inch outside diameter. But it's exactly the same hose that is between the two window washer nozzles. Not the one that feeds them. It's a little bit larger. But this one that runs between the two, it's the same size of hose. So it's a small hose. And yeah, that's where it goes. So let's go inside and we'll look at how, where it comes through the firewall from there. Okay, inside the car, it comes down from behind the heater housing, through that grommet in the firewall, down behind the heater housing, heater assembly. And here's the hose that it ties into at the engine. But this continues on to the park brake release and over to the uh, rear ventilation. So this hose continues along. And I have, I won't show you under the console because there's really nothing to see. We have, still have this apart so it makes it fairly easy to work with. Uh, my wife and I have been driving this car around town just enjoying it, but the interior hasn't been put back together yet. <laughs> so, it comes over here and let me get a light on it. Actually, we don't need a light. So, this is the one that goes to toward the back, toward the trunk. And here's the one that... Uh, goes to the trunk release switch in the glove box. So that, you'll see how I can pull on it. I don't know if I can see it or not. But that's the same hose, you'll see it pulling. 
just to prove that it is the right hose verify the right hose not prove just to verify so that goes into this to the vacuum controller in the glove box and then the hose continued on through to the trunk deck rear trunk lid lid so let me go up and uh, we'll, I have the glove box and we'll go up and see where the we mounted the switch the vacuum control switch in the glove box all right so they did mount this switch in the glove box down low and uh, you see trunk unlatch now it's an inch and a half from the inside over to the center and it's an inch up from the bottom to the center and I drew it out on a diagram here but if you have a trunk box that has that mold line in it it runs directly through that so then you'd only have to bring it up an inch from the bottom so there's kind of the measurements I scratched out so inch and a half to the center inch and a half, inch up from the bottom to the center so again inch and a half from here over to the center line which is actually there and maybe that's why they put it there because there was a they could do it all the same by using that as a reference and then it's an inch up to the center from the bottom of the glove box so that's how it's mounted and I'll spin it around and I'll show you the other side of the switch and this is where the hoses go on um, George was wanting to know uh, how it was where it was mounted in the glove box and, and that's where it is George right there and it just had well you already know this because you have a switch but anybody that doesn't, it just has a, a locking nut, threaded nut on. It looks like uh, the handle will come off with an Allen wrench, small Allen key. And the nut is actually a special nut. It has this trim piece over it. So it's not just any nut, but if you don't have it, I guess any work, anyone will work. But if you're buying these, try to get this nut too. I don't suspect these are as common to find. Anyway, so let's go back inside and we'll do a quick look at where the vacuum line goes after it leaves the glove box. All right, back inside the glove box and here's the little line that's for the trunk release. Here's the line that goes to the rear ventilation system, the rear flow through vent. <clears throat> so when we come up here, now the rear ventilation one travels in through this, this housing right here. It's right there and the other one doesn't follow that it comes out of the glove box underneath the, the left side of the column and then comes over and meets them in this area and then they both travel along the trunk or the ventilation one is red and this one doesn't seem to have any colors on it whatsoever but they both travel along and uh, the red one goes that way and then the uh, trunk release one heads over to the passenger side of the vehicle. And also why I'm here, while I'm here, sorry, John from Arkansas was asking about this separator car board, the trim uh, for the trunk liner and how it was mounted, <clears throat> mounted in the car. He, he uh, apparently a lot of these are missing. Um, this one happens to be intact. Like I said, this car is pretty much intact. It, um, I was quite lucky to get it actually even though it had a lot of rodents. But John, uh, and for anybody that's not knowing, they have uh, like a panhead screw, um, or not panhead screw, a modified truss head screw there. And there was another one over here. This one's missing. It was taken out or something. And then the little tabs just go behind. They kind of just lock in there. I guess you would fold it down in there. And fold it down in there and then put your screws in so that's all that holds those in and the you kind of they use this as a guide too because this is where the cabling goes through and these are just uh, places for the rear seat to latch in so they're cut out for that on these two places I have a new one I bought a whole new trunk kit for this and it this came in the trunk kit how accurate it all is I don't know so anyway let's get back to the vacuum system so here's the Here's the line for the ventilation, the rear vent. It goes up to there and terminates at the vacuum motor right there. And again, like I said, the uh, trunk release one continues on, heading kind of toward the passenger side of the vehicle. So let's go in the trunk 
and have a look. All right, here's something you older guys might uh, find interesting. Um, to me, I remember these old aluminum keys, these spares you could have cut. Um, this is called uh, coal, uh, Color Light. And then the square one was H33, and the round one was H32 for Fords. And I think it was Coal, Interna coal National USA. And they're just aluminum, and they're very lightweight. Uh, I don't know if you can still get those today or not. But uh, I thought that might be of interest to anybody. There was a set of these with, I have the original set of keys as well, but I also had this spare set. Now, I don't think these were provided by Ford. I think you had to get them cut. All right, well, let's get the trunk lid open, and we'll go after that vacuum line again. Now that we're in here, it's a getting a little bit tighter to see things. So when it came from to the right side, like I said, and it goes over to the right side of the right-hand uh, trunk hinge uh, set up, and then it traveled along the uh, the trunk deck itself and went in through this grommet, this plastic grommet here. And I believe that's the last we see of that line. Oh, we can see it right here. So there it goes again. I'll get back a little bit so you can see. So, but right here for reference is the uh, mounting bracket that George was asking about. He was asking about what type of screws it took. So George, they're like a Phillips panhead screw. Um, you already know what the bolts are. So what I'll, I'm going to pull this off and I'll get the length of that panhead screw. I suspect they're, they're no more than an inch long. But I also wanted to look at the mechanism over to where it ties into the door latch. Because George had a question there as well. But we'll get up in there and have a look. All right, I got the cover off for the mounting plate. And I just wanted to measure the screws up for George so he knows. They're a, ha a half inch long, George. These screws. Total length. About a half an inch panhead screw. All right, well, I can't find my uh, screw guide, bolt guide. So what I'll do, I'll just line it up there. And it appears to be like a 3 16 overall. Yeah, 3 16 So whatever that is in number, uh, screw numbers, I have no idea. But that should help you out, George. All right, let's get back on to the, uh, to the uh, actual door actuator. All right, so we're at the door actuator mounting plate, which goes on, screwed on by those little screws that I just showed you and here's where the vacuum line comes in and this is the little vacuum actuator and there's the little cable George that you have on yours and I'm trying to see without taking it right out what it I'll see if I can get in there and get some pictures of it see where it goes because you had questions around yours that had a thing uh, a little tail put on with an eye in it so let me uh, see if I can chase this down a little bit or get some better light on it. Maybe that's all I need to do here. All right, so there's the actuator, like I said, and there's a cable that goes from the actuator. And about midway, the cable, you can't really see it here, but there's a rod right here. The cable is connected with one of those like cable clamp clips, like the crimp on ones. It's just in there a little bit. I can't really see it. I can feel it with a pointer, but I can't see it. So the one you have, George, is correct. It's crimped together, so they join the cable to a rod. And that little rod with that eye on it that you were asking about is looped through a hole in this actuator arm here. There's the actuator arm, but where underneath the, where the lock comes through. So it, it just joins on, it kind of loops through like a pigtail, as near as I can see. Hopefully that's clear enough for you. So it threads through there, kind of curls through, and then it pulls. When, the, when it pulls, oh, I'll see if I can do it by hand. It's tight up in there. Yeah, so it, it'll pull the whole thing that way. 
as if you had the, uh, the same as what the trunk key would do when you turn the trunk key. So you might be able to see that better right there. So that's what that little eye is for, George, right there. There's a little spot for it to clip. Now, I don't know if it's, uh, it's open on the top that you can just uh, loop over it or it actually has to be curled through. I can't really see it. It looks more like a hole to me, so you probably have to take this, drop this thing down, but that's where it goes. And I'm missing the plate for this. You have it, George. I've seen you had a picture of it, so that plate's there. And I'm sorry I don't have a screw to tell you, but I assume it's the same as the ones that are holding the actuator plate on, uh, mounting plate. It'll be the same as, no, these are, these are different pan head screws. No, well, they look to be the same. Are these the same screw? Yeah, so possibly the same screw that holds this little piece in here access I think that's access to the trunk lock are the same ones that hold this plate on well that's it I covered what I have from front to back right from the engine where it ties into uh, after it leaves that vacuum line it's a complete separate system it's totally independent and speaking of independent hey July 4th is coming up in a couple days so happy Independence Day to all my US followers and we just had our Canada Day uh, yesterday, so we're past that. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll be taking off for a little bit. Uh, I won't, probably won't be making videos again until August. But uh, everyone take care, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.